Hello, hello, good morning and good night. It's 10 a.m. in San Francisco, 7 p.m. in Barcelona. Welcome to a new episode of Hack Together, our life coding show from Typeform. Uh, we're here to talk about some tech stuff and um, we have a cool agenda today. Um, if you don't recognize my background, uh, it's normal. I'm not at my place. I'm in the Sideform San Francisco office. Uh, we, it's a lot of plants and not so much light because it's a foggy day in San Francisco. I'm Nicholas. I'm a developer advocate at Typeform and I'm going to be your host for today. And I'm very happy to be joined by Valmir, who's joining us from Barcelona. Hey. Hey, Nicole. How are you? Great, great to have you here. Um, and so, as I said, we're going to do something a bit different than our regular uh, hack together. Today, we're going to talk about uh, a bit more technical topic. Uh, and uh, we do have uh, an expert in the house uh, over here. Uh, I, I reached out to you because I saw you did something on your YouTube video, on your YouTube channel, your own YouTube channel. Um, and um, also, you're sharing knowledge inside the Typeform team. Um, about something called Cypress. Um, so maybe can you tell us a bit more about yourself and uh, what you have in mind for today? Yeah, sure. I'm glad to be here. Uh, welcome everyone to the show. Um, so my name is Valmir. Um, I love sharing knowledge and today we will be sharing, I'll be sharing some knowledge about uh, API testing with Cypress. Cypress is a test automation framework that is very modern and very disruptive and it allows you to test web applications in a very different way that uh, we were we were used to with uh, the older tools and cypress allows us to run tests for anything that runs in the browser and um, it's meant to do end-to-end -end testing but it allows you to do more than that it allows you to test the front end decoupled from the back end. It allows you to test components in uh, very isolation. And it also allows you to run API tests. And it even allows you to combine all of those things. So today it's going to be about API testing. And I'm glad to be here. Yeah, API, API, API. Uh, this is really what we do here on this channel. Um, if you don't know about testing, uh, I think we can start probably by saying a bit what it is. Uh, if you're doing specifically software development and, and why you should care about testing. Yeah, sure. So um, we care about testing because uh, software uh, usually they have bugs and we want to prevent the software to have bugs. Uh, there are different ways to do testing. There is the, the, the old school way where you test manually after you implement the things but this is not very scalable. So the, the better way to do that is to create automated scripts that test your application uh, on your behalf. Uh, so when you introduce change to the application, you can run the regression suite to see that nothing that you have added to the, the new code, to the code base has broken what, has, what was already uh, um, working basically. Yeah, so we can't guarantee 100% no bugs, but we're getting really close to it. Um, so I'll say the floor is yours. You're the expert. I'm just here to ask the, the, the dumb questions and looking at the comments. So if you're joining us, feel free to drop some comments. Let us know if you're lost. Uh, we'll go over it together. Um, and uh, we, I can't wait to learn more about this. Yeah, sure. So um, today what I have planned is to create some API tests for uh, Typeform API. Um, but the, the concepts that I'm going to show you uh, can be applied to test any other public API. So um, if you can share my screen, Nico, thank you. So I have, um, so, and we are going to be using Cypress for that. So uh, I'm a big fan of this tool. I'm even a Cypress ambassador. I've been recognized by the Cypress team as an ambassador last year. And I love their slogan, which is the web has evolved, finally have, testing has too. And it's very true because Cypress allows you to uh, test very differently than uh, what we were used to do. Um, and for running API tests with Cypress, we use uh, functionality called side.request, 
which allows you to run HTTP requests to an API. And um, I can share the links with you, Nico, later on. So you can put the links in the description if people are interested in learning more. But this is the documentation of SIDOT request, which allows us to do, like, for instance, uh, get requests to uh, server that is running locally or something that is running uh, in the in the web in the in the internet basically and so i thought of testing typeforms api uh, and i will create a few tests to demonstrate how we can uh, create api testing with cypress um, so i think we can just uh, get started I created a project here on my my computer, and I have already set up some things. So this project has already Cypress installed on the latest version, which is uh, 10.3.0. And in this project, I also have created NPM scripts to open Cypress in what they call interactive mode and to run tasks in headless mode. I'm going to just hit side dot the column open so we can open Cypress um, here so you can have an idea on, of how it looks. Uh, with Cypress, it's possible to create end-to-end -end testing and component testing. I have configured this project specifically for end-to-end -end testing. Could you, but, could you tell us what, what is end-to-end -end testing? Just we're all clear on that. Yeah, sure. So end-to-end -end testing is when you test your application uh, completely with all the parts integrated. Uh, component testing, on the other hand, would be when you test, test a specific component in isolation. And in today's uh, session, we are going to be actually running API testing, which we could consider like uh, some kind of end-to-end -end testing, like if we run the, the test through the, the complete API. Uh, but it's not like it's nothing we won't see anything rendering in the browser. We'll just be hitting the API, retrieving it the response, and, and doing some assertions with the, the response from the request that we'll be doing. Um, so with the, the Cypress app, we can uh, run tests in different browsers. There's one disadvantage, let's say, in running API tests only with Cypress. And the disadvantage is that uh, Cypress runs in the browser. So we have to open the browser to be able to run the API tasks. But after the browser is open, uh, there's no more time wasted and everything runs uh, very uh, smoothly and very quickly. Um, and I have already created like uh, the basic structure with uh, one spec file, which that is like the specification of how our API should work. But for now, our test is empty. So um, I have basically, when you install Cypress for the first time and you open it for the first time, it guides you through the, the, the main configuration uh, and it creates all the files and folders automatically for you. So this is the configuration file that is automatically created and I haven't added anything else that is already put that that is already in there when it starts. So this is like just a basic configuration when you start a Cypress project with the version 10 of Cypress. Be before Cypress version 10, the configuration file was a JSON file, not a JavaScript file, but nowadays it's a JavaScript file. And besides the config file, Cypress also creates the Cypress directory. And below the Cypress directory, we have in this case, since it's end-to-end -end testing project, we have end-to-end -end, uh, directory, we have fixtures, and we have support. In support, we have uh, the end-to-end -end file, which basically imports the commands directory. And the commands directory, for now, it's empty. But here is where we put our custom commands, commands that we can create for reusability so we don't duplicate code. Uh, if we have time, I'll try to create some custom commands uh, uh, let's see how it's going to be. And, and, and right right now, your app, there's no app, right? It's, it's an empty app. For now, there's nothing. It's like just a basic structure, exactly. Right. Uh, fixtures is where you put some data that you want to, to use in your tasks. In our case, I have created uh, an example form fixture, which is a JSON file uh, that represents a very simple form. 
uh, with the fields and everything. And, uh, and then in end-to-end -end is where our tests live. And so far we have only uh, the spec.side.js file. Uh, side.js is the extension uh, from the newer version of Cypress. Um, and in here we use uh, Cypress behind the scene. It uses Mocha, which is a uh, unit testing uh, library. So the structure of our tests will use Mocha syntax, which means that we use the scribe function for describing our test suite. So, so far the name of the, the, our test suite is empty described. So I'm gonna change it to type form, type form API. And the second argument of our describe is a callback function. And inside of our describe is where we put our tests. And every test is eight block. And, um, and so far it's empty. So what I thought for starting that and actually before starting writing our first test, there's one thing that we need to do, which is to define the, the, the API, the URL of our API. And I'm gonna go to cypress.config.js file. And in here, I'm gonna define a property called env from environment. And in here, this uh, env is an object. And this object will have the API base URL and the URL will be the type forms uh, base URL, which is HTTPS um, um, API dot type form dot com, right? Yeah, we know it by heart on over here. <laughs> I can imagine, yeah. So now that I have the this base URL defined in a place that is kind of central to our tests, I can start using it. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I, I thought of creating the first test uh, as a test that retrieves my user information. So if we go to Typeform's documentation, I think I have it somewhere in here. Um, I think it's on this page here, yeah. So on the get hands-on page of, uh, of the API documentation, we have this URL here for retrieving uh, the user information. It's a get request to api.typeform.com slash me. So we already have that part here. The only part that is missing is the me part. So I thought of creating a first simple task that retrieves my user information, retrieves my user information. Uh, as the describe uh, block, the it block has the description of the test as the first argument. The second argument is a callback function. And inside of the callback function is where our test code will live. Um, and as I said, we will use sci.request sci to uh, execute uh, a HTTP request. Uh, there, there are different ways of using side.request. Uh, as you can see here in the documentation, you can pass the URL directly. You can pass the URL and the body. You can pass the method and the URL, the method, the URL, and the body, or you can pass an object with options. And this is what we are gonna be using. So um, <clears throat> if we scroll here to the, docu to the documentation, the options is an object that can receive many different attributes. So you can pass the URL, the method, uh, the body, we can pass like the headers and everything. So this is the way we'll be using side.request. So I'm just gonna pass an object here. Uh, this object will have like, a, will be, will have a, the, as the method, a get request. As the URL, we would have the, the API URL slash me. So actually what I, what I will do first here is I'm going to define as a variable, um, a variable called API URL. <clears throat> and in here, I'm basically going to grab from our environment that we defined in the config file. I'm going to grab the API, API base. Oops, let me copy from here so I don't mistype it. So I'm basically 
getting that information directly from the config file. Um, and they should not be here. All right. And in here, then I can use uh, template literals from JavaScript to interpolate the API URL with me. So it's going to be api.typeform.com slash me. And on Typeform to execute uh, HTTP requests, you need to be authorized. And so we have to pass some headers as well. And then in the headers property, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create also a variable here, um, which I'm going to call authorization. And this will be bearer. Uh, bearer. Bearer. <laughs> it's, it's a bear yeah. that's even more a bear. It's a bearer. <laughs> exactly. And then. Oh, there's something that I forgot to mention. Um, I have defined in this project here some uh, sensitive data, and I have an example file of the sensitive data that I have here. So the cypress.env.json file is, def is uh, defined on my git ignore, so I'm not tracking any sensitive information. But I have an example file here, and this file exemplifies exactly what I have here with my personal information. So I have the type form access token with my access token, username, password, user alias, which is something that I'm going to use in one of, of the tests, and a form ID uh, of a form that I already have. So in here, um, let me see. In here, I have my personal type form account, and I have one type form already created. And the type form that I have is ID. The type form ID that I have is for this type form specifically because it, there's one task that I want to show you, which would be retrieving the responses from this type form. Here. Okay. No spoilers. We we'll do that later. <laughs> for sure. So, uh, so one thing that people should do uh, to be able to run this test is go into their account settings on type form, generate an access token. Um, and then store this access token in this M file. Um, and exactly. now you're going to re retrieve it, right? Exactly, exactly. And awesome. uh, to, re to retrieve it, I'm going to use the same that I did uh, above. So I can do cypress.env, and then the name of my environment is typeform access token. So this way I have the authorization in here and then I can basically pass it uh, in the headers. So with that, I should be able to run this HTTP request. So let's just see how it goes. As we can see here, uh, Cypress has this functionality of uh, um, auto reload when you save the file it already reruns the test so it has already executed the test and we already have one passing test but so far it's not a real test because we are only doing uh, we are only performing the request but we are doing no assertions uh, but could it's you, already mm, interesting could you maybe make it bigger um zoom in because um is yes, it better now i think it's it's great yeah yeah so in here, we can see that uh, a request was made and it re responded with 200. If we click to inspect uh, and we go to the console, we can click on the request and we can see that the command that was uh, triggered was, let me see if I can uh, zoom in this one. So this is the request and this is what it yield. And this is like the response of the request with like my, my, with the body, the headers, the duration and the status. So this is very useful information that we can get in the, uh, in the console of the browser. So as you can see, as, as you, you've seen, we have the body, we have the, let me, let me show you again. Uh, we have the body, oh, well, not this one, the, you know, we have the body, duration, headers and status. Um, for this specific test, I only want to, to, to get information from the status to assert that the status of the request was 200. 
and I want to assert some things on the body of the response. So I'm going to chain here a dot shoot. On, on Cypress, every or almost every command is chainable. Instead of storing the return of something in a variable and doing something after, what you do is you chain commands to other commands, OK? So should is something similar to dot then in like promises in JavaScript. But the but it has the uh, the retryability, like if something goes wrong, it will retry. So I'm gonna uh, chain a dot should here, and the should can receive a callback function. Okay, in this callback function as argument, I'm gonna destructure the status of the request and the body of the request. Uh, this way, I can already run some assertions on the status and on the body as well. Since I just want a few informations from the body, just to exemplify uh, and to make things simpler, I'm going to destructure from the body only the alias and the language uh, from the body. And then I can already run my assertions. I can run expect status to equal 200. And I'm going to save it. And now we already have a passing task. And now it's, it's really a task because it's not only running the request, but it's also running some assertions. That was um, fast. It's super fast. After the browser is open, every, everything runs very fast. Um, and then we can also run an expectation on the alias, for instance. So expect. Uh, the alias to equal to what I have defined in an environment variable as well, uh, cypress.end um, user alias. And uh, we can do the same uh, for the language. Language to equal to English. And this is our first passing test. Uh, if I, for instance, uh, if something goes wrong, I, I can like simulate a, a failure, for instance, and then we, we get like this kind of information when the test is failing. I was expecting a 200, uh, um, and I, I was expecting 200 to equal to 201, and then we can see exactly the line that has failed. This is because I forced the failure just for you to see. Uh, but in case there was something wrong, we would see there uh, the information. And uh, that's a new question for me, but um, if an assert assertion fails, um, is, it, is each assertion a test or is the, the group of assertion a test? So do we see? If an assertion fails, it as like, let me just make it fail again. It doesn't, it doesn't continue running the rest of the assertions. It, because the idea is that if something is wrong, you should break the test and fix what is wrong. And you don't want to run anything else because it would take more time, right? Perfect. So basically, okay. it, it fails the first assertion. It, it don't, doesn't run the, the, the next one. Amazing. Yeah, so if, so if you're joining us, uh, just to recap what we're doing here, uh, we're doing a bit of a hack together that's a bit more techy. Um, and we're looking at how, uh, when you're building an application um, and you're using third-party APIs, how you can build tests for those APIs and uh, make sure that everything is working. Um, and so exactly. far, we run a first test. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's very important that you mention that because sometimes we are consuming a third-party uh, application uh, API, and sometimes it's like... Uh, this might not be stable. So before running any other kind of test, we want to test that the connections are correct, uh, are, are working correctly. So we test the API first, just to see everything is working. Now it's worth testing other parts like the, like the whole system connected, like front end with the back end, connecting with the API and everything. Yeah, and this is the easiest API call you can make on Typeform. It's just like retrieving who you are and uh, make sure that the connection is, is working. Exactly. Uh, so for the second test that I thought, I thought of, uh, I showed you that I have already a type form created. 
And I thought of creating a task that retrieves um, form responses. So in the callback function of my task here, I'm going to now run a side out request uh, where I'm going to pass an object as well. Uh, Cypress has like IntelliSense uh, out of the box. So even as you can see, I'm using JavaScript and on version 10, it already has like type definition and like the signature of the function and everything that I, that I need uh, to, to, to work. Um, so I'm also gonna run a get request. This time I'm gonna run a get request to the forms. Um, to the forms, to the forms, not to the, to a specific form ID to retrieve the responses. So I- It's it's under, oh, maybe you have it here, but it's, otherwise it's under responses API. Yes, exactly. Yeah, but it, this is what I want. So I want to do a get request to api.typeform.com slash forms, slash the form ID slash responses. Um, so in the URL, oops, URL, I'm gonna do um, exactly what I did in here. But instead of me, I'm gonna um, say forms. And then in here, I can use another expression to get the form ID. So cypress.env, uh, as I have showed you in the example file, I have like here a form ID, uh, which is also on my uh, not tracked cypress.env.json file. So I'm going to get the form ID and then the oops, responses. Oh. And I need to be authorized. So I'm gonna get the headers exactly as I did before. And oh, there's one thing here as well. Uh, since Cypress uses Mocha, we can use like dot only to run only one specific task. And on Visual Studio, I have a, uh, an extension called Cypress Helper, which allows me to just click in the it file to put the dot only in the it block or to remove it. So it's like very handy. Um, and it seems that I have done something wrong. Let's see what I have done wrong for ID. Oh, it's because it should be between quotes. So uh -huh. now it should work. Uh, so the request is uh, happening correctly. So what we could do now is something similar to what we did before. So I'm going to chain a should. Uh, in the should, I'm gonna destructure again the status and the body. Oh, actually, this should be between parentheses. And now I can run the assertions that um, the status is again to equal to 200. Let's just run it to see if it works. So the request is working and I can, for instance, expect um, body dot total total items. If I'm not wrong, I have only one um, response, um, but I can also, let's, let's do something like, I can do like to equal to the body dot items <laughs> dot length. Yeah, that makes it and dynamic because if you are hard coding it one response, it will only work until you get more responses. Exactly. So this way, like I'm just confirming that total items correctly counts the items basically on the number of items that are being retrieved. Um, and now we can see that it's like just one. I could hard code it, but as you mentioned, like if there's a new response to that form, my task would be failing and would have to be updating it. So this way um, it's, it's dynamic. And if I remove the dot only, we will see both the tasks passing. Okay. So, so the, the, only, it's, it, the only, it's, it's very helpful when you are currently working on the test. And so you only, 
running the test, this the, the, the one you're working on, so you, you don't run the whole suite, right? Exactly. Especially like at the moment, it runs very fast because there are true tests, but in real life, you usually you would have like a big suite of tests and you don't want to wait a long time for all the tests to run. So when you are working on a new test, you can do, put a dot only uh, so that it only runs that specific test. And when you are ready, of course, remove dot only, don't commit it, and then make sure that everything else is working as well. Awesome. Uh, so I don't, do don't want to make you... Yeah, I don't want to make your, your thing more complicated. Uh, and then feel free to jump in the comments if, if you have any questions uh, as you're following. Um, but I see one edge case where uh, the last session that you did on total items uh, is not going to work. Um, and it's the case where you have more than, uh, I think the default that we're returning is, is 250 responses. Um, mm. We have pagination. Like you have to go to the pagination. Um, so that's an interesting... Uh, case of like, how are you going to take care of this? Um, yeah. To be honest, I, I'm not prepared for that one. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. That's, that's the homework. If, if, you, if you're watching this, find a solution uh, and uh, we'll see if you get it right. <laughs> yeah, it's surely something to consider. Thanks for bringing that up, Nico. Uh, so now I thought of uh, doing something uh, more uh, it's not very much complex, but something like not just uh, get request. We can do like post request as well. Um, so I thought of creating a task that creates a form. Okay. And so if we go here to the documentation, we have the create um, API and on create API, we have like, we can do api.agform.com slash forms. And there are some information that are mandatory. There are some that are not. Uh, these are all the fields. And here we have in the docs, an example of um, the body of the request. So what I did was I copied this, the body and I pasted it on the fixtures as example form.json and I removed lots of stuff to make just a very simple form. So this is like the definition of a very simple form uh, and I'm gonna use it for this specific test. So the first thing I'm gonna do before writing the test is I'm gonna import that fixture to my test file. So I'm gonna create a variable called sample form which will basically uh, require from fixtures that example form.json. So now I have the body of uh, my request. I'm gonna create, I'm gonna call again side of request where now the method will be a post request Oops. The URL, I can copy it from here and delete the part that I'm not gonna use. So it's until forms. So api.typeform.com slash forms. And I have to be authorized as well. So I'm just gonna copy and paste because I'm lazy. <laughs> and finally, I have to pass the body. Uh, and in the body here, I'm going to pass the sample form that I defined uh, up there. Um, and this way, if I put a dot only here, I, can, I, I have already created a form. And if we go to my type farm account here, I'm going to refresh. You see that a form has been, has been created, type form created by a Cypress test. So pretty easy like to create a form uh, uh, um, running an API uh, request. Uh, but the thing here is that if I rerun the test, for instance, and I go back here, I'm gonna have another one. And I think I executed twice, maybe because I, when I press Ctrl S, it saves and reruns. So it executed twice already. So I have three type forms here and I don't want to leave trash behind. 
So something that I usually do when I'm doing um, API testing and when I'm creating resources uh, is that I like to clean up before I start. And it's very important to mention in automated tests that you do the cleanup before and not after. Because if something goes wrong with the test, uh, the after hook might not run and you might leave trash behind anyway. But if you clean up before, then you, be sh you are sure that you are starting from a clean state and then you are only creating one thing and if another test runs, it clean ups before and then it runs the, the things that needs to be executed. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna create a context. This is also from Mocha uh, library. You can create contexts to like basically to better organize your test suite. So I'm gonna create a context here that I'm gonna call it clean up before start. And you can call it whatever you want. I'm just giving it a name that makes sense to what I'm doing. And in the, con in the context itself, I can have as I could in a before each, I'm not doing it in the before each and the before each not in the describe. In the describe, I could have a before each hook that runs before each test. Uh, and I can do the same inside of the context. So there is a before each hook, which will run before each test. So before each test, it's gonna run a callback function. And this callback function, what I thought of doing is, I'm gonna run a get request to get all my forms and then find the form that is created automatically and deletes it before creates, creating it, okay? So I'm in here, I'm gonna have a side of request inside of another, uh, a side of request inside of another. So basically I'm gonna, gonna do a side of request. Um, I think it's gonna be basically this here. So I'm just gonna copy and paste. Uh, let me just confirm if that's correct. So it's like get to forms, yeah. Yeah, okay. uh, but, but here instead of post is get because I'm retrieving uh, the forms. Uh, so now I have a way to get the, 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 the forms uh, to delete them beforehand. Uh, and so I can chain a shoot. And I can the structure from the response, the status and the body. And before doing the cleanup, I can be sure that uh, the the request, the get request, has happened correctly. So I can run an expectation that the status is equal to two hundred. And then now I can do something like. From the body, I'll get all the items, okay? And I'm gonna call a for each function from JavaScript, like uh, since items is an array, I can iterate over this array to, 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 to see like if the, the form that I am going to delete is the form that I want to delete. Uh, and the for each uh, function receives a function as arguments, so the argument of this function is gonna be the item itself. And in, doc, in the callback function, I can run a condition just to check, like, is this form the form that I want to delete or is it a form that I created in a non-automatic way? I don't want to delete the forms that I created by hand. I just want to delete the ones that I created uh, via automation. So in here, I can simply run like a, a normal uh, if condition uh, to check, for instance, that the item.title is equal to the sample form dot title, which is going to be mm -hmm. like the type form created by, by a Cypress test. And if that's the case, then I am going to call again request request. And in here, the method method will be delete. The 
URL will be API URL um, forms slash and then I have the ID of the form because I'm, I have the uh, I am inside ID. of the uh -huh. yeah, exactly so I can do the item dot ID and I need to be authorized of course so I'm going to copy the headers here And um, and I could even check that the deletion has happened correctly. So I could change a should where um, I could destructure here the status again. And I could run expect status to equal to, I think it's 204, right? Yes. Um, so let's just check here. So what I'm doing is I created, well, actually this is still not inside of my context. So let me just check here. So, yeah. So now I have a context called clean up before start and it creates a form but it has a before each hook that runs before the test itself. And if I had more tests that would be creating form, the hook could be running before each of the tests. Uh, so I don't leave trash behind. And then in the before each hook, I'm calling inside the request to get all the forms. I'm checking that the request has happened correctly. Then I'm iterating over each item of the response of the body. And I'm running a condition to see if the the, the item that I'm getting is the item that was created automatically based on the fixture that I'm importing in here, right? If it's, that's the case, then I'm running a side that request to, to run a delete request uh, to api.iform.com slash forms slash the form ID. And then I'm just asserting that the deletion has happened correctly. And then I run the task that creates the form. So I'm just gonna save it. And since there is a dot only, it should run only that specific task. And the nice part here is because I had three uh, forms already, it deleted the three of them before creating the, the form itself. And actually the test itself is not a test so far because of what, Nico, do you know? Is missing the assertion. Exactly. So I should always run assertions because if I don't run assertions, like this is a, a mistake that some developers do. Like you think you have 100% coverage, but you are running no assertions. And this means that you have actually like a very, like, a, uh, like it's a vanity metric. You, you, you just have 100% because you're passing by all the lines of the code, but if you are running, you know, assertions, you don't know if things are really working the way you should. Um, so I'm gonna run a should here, um, where I'm gonna destructure, uh, again, the status. Starting to be familiar with the destruction. <laughs> yes. And then I can expect the status to equal to 201 because it's like create. And yeah. well, actually I like to destructure things instead of doing body dot something. So I'm gonna uh, get like the fields, the title and the type, because this is uh, what I want to assert on. So I'm gonna destructure those specific attributes from the body of the response. And then I can expect that fields.length uh, is equal to the sample form dot fields dot length. I can expect also that uh, the title is equal to the sample form dot title. And I can expect 
the type to equal to the sample form dot type. And this is like, a, I like to do these things this way instead of hard coding the assertions because if my fixture change, I have no change to do in my task. Everything should still work. Thinking, um, thinking long-term. Exactly. So now we can see that now it only deleted one thing because it created one before. So it deleted the thing before. And if we go here and we refresh, we should have the type form that I created manually, which, which I don't want to delete, and the one that was created automatically. So this way we don't leave trash behind. Um, uh, I, have, I have a couple of questions for you. Um, so one thing um, on your on recommendation around this, um, one other way to do this could have been to create a special workspace in your type form uh, account and be like, this is my test workspace and this is where I run all, all the things. Is there an advantage of doing this compared to run it in your regular stuff, like on the way you run tests? Do you want to replicate exactly the same thing that you will run normally? Do you want... um, I would say both options are valid. Um, it's a matter of preference. Uh, even if you are using, like you're creating your own, own workspace for testing, you don't want to leave trash. You don't want this workspace to have thousands of type forms in there. So I think it's always good to do some cleanup every now and then. Uh, and if that's the case, then you wouldn't need to do the cleanup in the test itself. You could have something like cron job that like every week deletes all the forms and everything, but it's like a, I, I don't see like a, one being better than the other, to be honest. Okay. I mean, better for our business. If you, if you create a lot of forms, you forget about this, then we'll may ask you to upgrade. Uh, but yeah, it's probably not practice. Uh, and the other yeah, question I that I had, um, you doing this for each loop on all the forms that you have, uh, that you have on your account to then delete them. Um, there's something very familiar for all of us making API calls in JavaScript uh, is awaiting for the results. Um, do you have to take care of this? Uh, like what, what is, how are you guaranteed that this whole thing is gonna run and all the API calls are gonna be made before running the test? Yeah, so th that's the, where Cypress come into place. It, it's, it's smart enough to wait for the things to finish before moving on to the next thing. Thing. Although uh, Cypress run in JavaScript and JavaScript is asynchronous, the Cy commands, the, the commands that are native on Cypress, they are actually queued and they are executed one after the other. So it waits for the things to finish before moving on to the next thing. Um, Perfect. Let's head it yes. Okay. Yeah. So the last thing that I thought of sharing here would be, as you can see here, uh, this file already has almost 70 lines of code. And especially this one here, uh, it's, it's kind of messy. Like it's like uh, the, the should inside the, there, there is a callback and then there's another callback. And this doesn't look that beautiful, at least in my opinion. So one thing that we could do is to turn this thing into custom commands. So I'm going to, create a custom command just for this last one because it's the biggest one. Uh, and then, but you can get the idea of how it works and you could do the same for uh, any other custom command. And then we can talk about the advantages of doing that. So as I mentioned in the beginning on the support directory, we can create custom commands. Uh, so what I thought of doing is extracting all of that to commands and to create custom commands there's the Cypress module, uh, and then we can call commands.add to create a, um, a custom command, which a custom command is basically something that you call with side dot. As you do with native commands like side dot request, you can create your own commands that will be available on the side global object. So I'm gonna create a custom command here, which I'm basically gonna call cleanup before start um, and it's gonna execute a function. And in here, I'm basically gonna paste all that code. And then in here, instead of doing all that, I can simply say side off 
clean up before start. So and I think you call we... your comment clean before start and not clean up. Okay, so let's clean up. Yeah. That's that's the good part of pair programming. Um, and yeah, everything is working and the code is a little bit cleaner and I could even extract this part, for instance, to a custom command. So I could have a custom command here um, called create form. And if my custom command would receive arguments, I could pass the arguments inside of my function here. In this case, I'm not going to do that, but I could. Um, and then in here, I could say dot create form. And let me just see if I saved here. Oh, but now the thing is that uh, this custom command is using the sample form and the authorization, and they are not in this file. So I would have to uh, get this information here as well in my commands directory. So now um, it's there and everything mm -hmm. is working. And I wanted to do this, Nico, because uh, a big advantage of having your the creation of your resources in a custom command is that at the moment we are only running API tests. We are like Cypress is, is running in the browser, but we see nothing rendered in the browser here. But the big advantage of using Cypress is that it runs, it can it can run things that it can simulate users interacting with your application in the browser, and there are times that you have to set up some things for running something that runs in the browser. So let's say I want to test uh, that after I created that type form, I can share the link, I can publish the type form and share it with someone else. But doing all this setup through the graphical user interface, it's very time consuming, right? And it's not mm -hmm. the subject and it's not the target of my test. I could have a task, and I should, that creates a form through the graphical user interface, not only through the API, to see that it works from the user point of view as well. But when the setup part is just a pre, when the creation of the form is just a precondition for my task, creating it through the API is much faster and makes my task faster and more independent. So if I were to create uh, end to end test, test that would open the browser, log in on type form, and then I would have to create a type form so that I could share, publish it and share it with someone else. Doing everything through the UI would be very time consuming. But if I have uh, a custom command that does that through the UI, through the API, I'm um, sorry, then I could save a lot of time and my task would be very focused on what it's testing and not on the precondition. Yeah, so it helps you on the readability of your test and yeah, make it easier to build those tests. Um, exactly. And that's what I had for today. Uh, what I can do afterwards is to commit and push this code to GitHub and make it uh, public on a, a public repository and share it with you so you can put in the description of the video and then people can fork it and can play with it and can you know expand from where we 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 are living here yeah um so this is this is amazing um we have a few people uh, that are connected so if you want to ask questions um Something that sure, you want to please. explore, some, something that you missed, let us know. Um, I have one question um, regarding the difference between those two solutions. Um, as you've shown, uh, we are calling the API for real. It creates resources for real. Uh, some APIs may have some rate limits. Some APIs may charge you for, uh, for API calls. And so... The opposite solution for testing is usually what we call mocking. So mm -hmm. 
having something that's faking the API. Um, do you see any advantage, disadvantage between those two solutions? Uh, are they working together? Well, for, for API testing, um, I don't see that much advantage on locking the, the API. Uh, on the other hand, if I am testing the front end, then I see a lot of advantages of mocking the responses from the API because I could even build the front end without the back end being ready. And then Cypress has another functionality which is called side of intercept, which you can intercept calls that after some actions, a calls might be might happen. So for instance, a form can be created and I could listen to the calls and uh, and reply instead of calling the real API reply with a fixture file with the exact response that the backend would give me. And then the front end would render something that is static instead of creating the API. And then I could mm -hmm. build the front end completely independent of the backend. But for testing the API itself, I think it's better to, to hit the real API. And then, yeah, and you can, if, I mean, you have some environments some, some APIs and I imagine like something, I'm thinking something like Stripe where they have a, a sandbox and they have the production. Um, exactly. So you can have those calls happening in the sandbox instead of hitting yeah. the production. I think that's a, that's then a very great idea. Like you are still hitting a, a, a real API, it's not the production one, but it's like a replica of the production one, but mocking it, it wouldn't be testing that much in the API layer then. Okay, um, that makes a lot of sense. And so if people want to go further, what, what, what are the, because I think for me it was, it was very visual. I think I got it, how to write uh, tests um, using the API, doing basic assertion. Um, what, what do you do if you, if you want to go further? What is supposed to happen? Um, I would say the Cypress documentation is a very good place to start. Uh, it's great. Uh, it's great since the beginning. This is something that the Cypress team, they put a lot of effort on building uh, a documentation that is super great, where almost all the information that you need will be there. And Cypress has also uh, recently developed these uh, online courses that are completely for free on learn.cypress.io. There are four courses available uh, about like testing your, fir uh, your first application, testing foundations, Cypress fundamentals, and advanced Cypress concepts. I think these are great places if you want to explore more what Cypress uh, can, can offer to you. Yeah, and uh, on, you know, on, on testing, do you, um, so should I run, I, I should write some tests for every single API call that my app is making? Is that, is that your, your recommendation um, too? I don't know if you should for all. I would say that you should understand which are the most important uh, ones and write tests for those at least. And it, it really depends like from application to application because if you, I think that the main advantage if you have not only API tests, if you have a combination of like unit testing, component testing, API testing, end-to-end -end testing. And if you have end-to-end -end testing, which is something that Cypress is really good for, uh, many of your API, any, and many of your end-to-end -end testing will actually be hitting the API. So you don't want to duplicate things, right? So if you already have an end-to-end -end test that is already hitting some of your APIs, you don't need to uh, duplicate tests in the API layer. Uh, so like it's, it's, it's tricky actually to find the right balance, uh, but I would say like test your, the most important ones and then uh, see where you evolve from there. Great. Well, that's, that's awesome wisdom on, on testing. Uh, I know it's a, it's a hard topic. It's usually something we do at the end uh, when you're working on a small project, you're like by yourself, you're like oh, I'll, I'll just do it, I'll build the features. I'll make the thing work and then eventually I write tests for it. Um, I know this is something we see in our internal hackathons uh, as like next step, write a test. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but do that early, do that often. And uh, yeah, that's, that's a recipe for success, yeah. I guess. 
you get the benefits if you write as early as you write them uh, you get the benefits because uh, in the beginning it might be uh, you might think it's going to be easier just to not write the tests but it's like uh, it's it's like when you have a debt like it's the compound interest comes uh, and, and gets you like uh, if you if you have lots of regressions to run uh, to write the test for all the, the regression points uh, very late in the process, you have a lot of time to write the test. But if you are writing the test while you are developing the app, you are very confident that when you make change and the tests pass, you can ship it to production because you have tests that ensure that everything is working as, as they should. Nice. So buy yourself some time and, and confidence. Uh, this is amazing. I, 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 I learned something new. Uh, I, I discovered a new tool. I hope you, you all enjoyed it. Uh, feel free to rewatch this on, on YouTube. And Valmir, if, if people want to follow up with you, what is the, the best way to reach out? Um, I would say on, on Twitter, I'm very active. I'm going to post my tweet. I have, it, I, I have it ready for you here. Oh, then, yeah, that's the one. That's the place to, to follow me. I, I, I'm very active on Twitter. Awesome. Well, uh, thanks again for, for joining us, uh, Valmir. That was very insightful. Uh, I hope uh, people learn something new. Uh, let us know if you like this type of content as well, uh, something that it's a bit less around what you can do with Typeform, uh, but more about general tech topics. And uh, we'll probably do more. And um, enjoy the rest of your day. And I'll see you uh, next time. Thanks for having me. Bye. Bye-bye.